Hello and welcome back to the OTB channel. I did say there might not be a video this Saturday. Unfortunately, the weather conspired against me this week, even though I had a week's leave. So I thought, well, I will do a video because so far I haven't had a chance to take the beast out. So I'm going to take the opportunity to act on a request from one of my viewers who's pointed out to me that Linux Mint Debian Edition, a new release has just come out, and could I have a quick look at it? So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'll see you after the intro. Okay, welcome back. So Linux Mint certainly has its haters, um, but I'm not one. I've done a few reviews of Linux Mint over the past two and a half years or so, and uh, I've used the distribution a few times, and I've always been quite impressed with it. I do like Cinnamon as a desktop environment, despite the fact that I tend to use window managers now rather than full environments, but nevertheless... Cinnamon is a really polished desktop environment that I think is suitable for people who are just starting out on Linux and also for those who are staying on Linux. Um, it's a preference that many people make. I know certainly in my Facebook group, uh, Mint is popular, and it's popular for good reason. It's a damn good distro. As far as the Debian edition is concerned, though, it's almost like the poor brother. It doesn't get the same publicity. I know that Linux Mint Debian is produced almost as a backup, just in case Ubuntu ever goes away. And um, I sort of understand that, but given the relationship Mint has had with Ubuntu recently and you know, the argument over making sure that snaps aren't included in Mint. I'm quite surprised, really, that steps haven't been taken to move the distribution a little bit closer to the origin, i.e. Debian. Um, so I'm going to be interested to see what the Debian edition looks like. I'm going to run through a standard setup in VirtualBox. Uh, I'll run through the features and I'll be running through them as someone who hasn't actually looked at Mint for a while and so isn't actually that familiar with uh, the distribution. So it's almost going to be first eyes, just like any new user would have, on the distro to see what I think. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's boot up and uh, see where this takes us. So what you should see now in front of you is the live ISO of... Uh, Linux Mint Debian Edition. And I'm always struck with Linux Mint. Um, it, it's a personal thing, just preferences. Just what a smart-looking desktop it is. I have to say that on and off throughout the years, I have given uh, Cinnamon a try. Uh, I have uh, run for several months uh, Linux Mint, but this is the first time that I've actually tried the Debian edition. And so far, first look, you really can't tell there's any difference. So let's get on and do the install and uh, take it from there. Nice to see that install Linux Mint is on the desktop. Uh, although it seems to be taking a little while to launch. Uh, here we go. Um, let's go. Right, I'm not sure what installer this is. Uh, it looks slightly different to what you'd normally find in uh, an Ubuntu installation. But there we are. It's picked uh, United Kingdom. That's correct. Europe, London. All good. UK English keyboard. Again, all good. Let's just go through the uh, normal uh, thing. I picked my commute, uh, computer name here, um, OTB Mint. Why not? And if I could spell, it would be even better. Choose a password. Okay. 
and confirm the password. Okay. Uh, do I require my password to log in? Yes, I do, please. It doesn't ask me to set a root password at the moment, as I believe the root account is disabled by default. So what does it want me to do? Um, erase a disk and install LMDE on it. Use LVM, encrypt the operating system, fill the disk with random data or something else. Well, let's just go for the standard. I only have one disk here, SDA. So next, do I want to? Am I sure? Yes, I am, please. No partition no table was found. Carry on. Install Grub on Dev SDA. Yep, that's all good. So it's definitely a different installer here to one I've seen before. Is everything okay there? Yeah, looks pretty good to me. Let's just install. And we'll come back once it's done. Right, so that just took 10, 12 minutes. Um, didn't require any further interaction from me, and it's now ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot this, I'm going to run the updates, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at the distro. Right, and we're back. So uh, after the Linux Mint uh, install, I rebooted, I brought up the Mint update. Uh, there were quite a few packages to update, so I ran that, and I've rebooted. It was all pretty painless. You can see I've got the normal... Uh, check my video drivers message up at the top that's because it's cinnamon and uh, cinnamon and uh, virtual box uh, aren't the best of friends to be honest um, but as you can see we're, we're back at a, a desktop that looks pretty much like we had on the live system and you immediately get greeted by this welcome screen and it takes you through all the little tweaks that you can do so First, make yourself at home. Choose your favourite colour. Okay, well, let's go for, say, blue. Okay, all good. We'll go for blue. And what about this? What does that actually do? Let's turn it on and see. There's dark mode right out of the box. So let me bring up Nemo, the file manager, and just have a look at what that actually looks like. I quite like that look. What about a lighter, a lighter blue? That's quite nice. Or perhaps even a green. I think I'm going to go with the green at this point. So all good. Then we're asked, what do you want your layout to be? Traditional or modern? So modern is the large panel that we have here. So I could choose traditional, and let's see what happens then. Right, so we get a smaller panel um, with our traditional Windows list, as opposed to, let's just go back and have a look. Ah, right, rather than a Windows list across the bottom, you just get the standard uh, buttons to click on. Okay, well, let's stick with uh, modern. We get... Uh, System snapshots, uh, of course. So you can use that if you want to take backups. And interestingly, a section on multimedia codecs. Back in the day, Linux Mint used to come with all the multimedia codecs pre-installed. But I presume through legal reasons, we're going to have to launch them and install them separately. So let's see what this uh, brings up. Do you want to install uh, the package Mint Meta Codex? Yes, we do. So let's install and see how long that takes. It's asking for my password. And I'm just looking what it's installing here. So a whole range of libraries, including the uh, additional GStreamer libraries that should give us the functionality to, to play just about anything we need to play. So I'll pause this until uh, this is done. Well, that was hardly worth pausing as it's uh, done its thing already. Let's just maximize this window. 
We then have a link to the update manager, which is nice and straightforward. I've already run this, so I'm not expecting to find anything. When you first launch it, it asks you if you'd like to uh, switch to local repos. So I switched to uh, a couple of uh, UK repos for the main Mint LC uh, repo and, of course, the Debian repo. System settings, well, let's have a look in here and see what it offers us. And again, I'm going to maximize this. So we have a range of backgrounds that we can uh, apply. At the moment, I have to say, they all look pretty similar to each other uh, on this version of Linux Mint. But we can, of course... Oh, it's good seeing that we have... Uh, the backgrounds from previous versions as well. Let me just uh, minimize this for a minute so that we can see what we've got. So, some really nice backgrounds there, actually. And what about Ulyssa? It certainly comes fully loaded, that's for sure. And Uma? There's enough to get you started here. And Una. Let's go for the uh, red waves. Mm. Having said that, now that I've chosen it, I'm not sure that uh, I actually like the red waves. No, I don't. Uh, let's pick something more subtle. Lily, maybe. I tell you what, I think for the time being, I'm just going to stick with uh, the standard Linux Mint wallpaper. Um, something like that. Or even, I'll just go back to that. Anyway, all good. Uh, so that's uh, the system settings there. What else have we got in system settings? I clicked out of there a bit fast. Effects. Well, we can set all of our effects there. But clearly, I'm in VirtualBox. I haven't got proper uh, GPU drivers, so I'm not going to play with them. But you have quite a lot of options there. You can select your fonts. I see it's using the Ubuntu regular fonts there. And we can select themes. And I do quite like the way that with this, we've got the options already built in. So as well as actually choosing a broad theme, you can mix and match by playing with your folders and your buttons and your cursor and your desktop themes. Okay, well, there's plenty to go out there, that's for sure. What else have we got as we move down? Pretty much standard stuff. You've got the desklets, little sticky desklets. Not something I'm a great fan of, I have to say. Uh, but we also have the option to install some extensions. Um, although nothing actually appears here, uh, I'm just wondering if there's some way to uh, search for extensions. Download, perhaps? Ah, right, okay. I just need to click to download. And you've got a whole range of different extensions that you can apply there, including a custom shadow, a desktop scroller, move windows back to their original location when reconnecting a monitor. That could be quite useful with uh, a laptop. So lots to play with. What about general? So that's your compositor more than anything else, and you can set a memory limit. Interesting. Hot corners, okay, I don't use them, but I know some people do. Your input method, your language, notifications, online accounts. Okay, you've got plenty of choice there if you want to connect your online accounts. Your panel, your preferred applications, a screensaver, startup apps, all the normal things. Then you come down to your hardware, and you can see what you've got there, and a firewall. Let's have a look at what the firewall is. I'm presuming this is UFW. We'll soon be able to tell once it launches. 
It is UFW. Um, always surprises me how uh, distributions don't enable this from scratch. But I suppose at the end of the day, um, no, no uh, service ports are open by default. So it's not a huge issue. All you have to do, though, is click that button and it's now enabled. The login window, the software sources. Let's go to software sources and see what it's got to offer. I think all we're going to see is what I've just set. Uh, we've got a couple of UK sources, main and base. And your users and groups dialog. So coming back here, you've then got a software manager. Now, you can, of course, uh, just use apt. It's Debian at the end of the day. So you want to sudo apt install something, off you go. But let's see what the software manager looks like. Linux Mint, of course, uh, has decided that uh, it's not going to use snaps, but I believe it can use flat packs. Um, as far as snaps and flat packs are concerned, I don't really have that much uh, to say about either of them. I'm not fundamentally opposed to them, but neither have I bought into either of them. I tend to, on the systems that I use, just use the standard apps from the repository. But if you want to use flat packs, I can understand how they can be useful. Um, so, so, all good. This is taking a little while. But here we go. So let's just see what we've got here. So uh, if I wanted to install, so we have categories down here. Let's say I wanted to install FileZilla. What is this? Is this a flat pack or is this just a standard, um, a standard package? It looks to me like it's just a standard package. So I'll hit on an install. It asks me for my password and uh, it gets on doing its thing. And FileZilla should appear in the menu once that's actually done. Okay, so that, that's been done. So if I go into my menu and I wanted to find out where FileZilla was, there is FileZilla. It's been installed. Let's, uh, I tell you what, let's look at something like OBS Studio. I don't quite know how we got to VLC there. So OBS Studio. So we have two options here. So let's just have a look at that one. Ah, so this is a flat pack. So you can actually install both. So some of them are just standard Debian uh, packages. And some are uh, a, a standard uh, apart. Some will actually be a flat pack. Okay, good. So you get the idea. Um, do we still have Synaptic Package Manager in here? I know, I know. I'm old school and I prefer Synaptic. And yes, we do. We have the Synaptic Package Manager. And I have to say, the chances are that I would probably use that rather than uh, a software store. But you pick your poison and use whatever you want. And you also have on this startup screen a link to the firewall. In terms of documentation, apparently there's a collection of guides that you can look at. I'm expecting this to uh, open up in a web browser, which it does. Uh, so we've got an installation guide, a user guide, a troubleshooting guide, a translation guide. Okay, all good then. So, so far, it's pretty much what I expected from uh, Linux Mint. What software does it come with out of the box? Well, let's have a look at accessories. Pretty much what you'd expect there, an archive manager. You've got Redshift there. Uh, you've got an onboard screen, keyboard rather. You've got Warpinator for sending and receiving files across a network. 
that is pretty good. I've tested it. I do like that. I've been using it in Arch for a while, actually. And you've got a USB image writer. Document scanner and drawing and something called PIX under graphics. No GIMP, but the GIMP can, of course, be easily installed. Firefox is your default web browser, along with Thunderbird for email. And we have a link there to web apps. I wonder what they are. Let's have a look. Run websites as if they were apps. So this is almost like a, an ice apps thing. Um, what does it tell us here about? It's just called web apps. Okay. So I presume you, you run a website in, in a little uh, GUI, basically. With Office, you've got the whole of LibreOffice here. Sound and Vision, you've got Rhythmbox and Celluloid. I believe Hypnotics is uh, Internet TV. And then, of course, you've got all your administration. So statistics, a backup tool, disk usage, system reports, a system monitor. I've been clicking around this for a while, so I would imagine it's using... Uh, more RAM than it did at the beginning. It's using 1.1 gig of RAM. So that's not dreadful, to be honest. What else have we got here? Uh, preferences. Pretty much the items we saw in the, in the settings panel, panel earlier. And then just links to the various places. There's not a huge amount to say about Linux Mint. Uh, it's a solid distribution. If you prefer to stay a little bit closer to the original source, i.e. Debian, go for the uh, Linux Mint Debian edition. You're not really going to suffer any drawbacks uh, as far as going with this is concerned. Essentially, it seems to have everything in it that the standard uh, Linux Mint has. I suppose what you do potentially lose is access to uh, a world of PPAs there with additional software. And potentially, I suppose, if you're running Ubuntu, um, you're more likely to find help for particular issues if it's an Ubuntu-related issue than it is a Debian-related issue. Both of those things, I would imagine, are only going to be relevant to brand new users once you've been using linux for a while you can find your way around these things and to be honest although linux mint does have that kind of tag that it's a beginner's distro um i don't think there's any such thing to be honest it's a great distro to begin on but um it's a great distro to stay on as well in my opinion i think it's well put together um i like cinnamon it's probably the most Windows-like of all the desktop environments out there. I've got nothing bad to say about this. So on that basis, let's go and have a chat. So that's Linux Mint Debian Edition. Um, it's a fine distribution. I honestly have nothing bad to say about this distribution. Um, for somebody who wants a distro that's solid, dependable, does what it says on the tin and is ready to go with, you know, immediately after a straightforward installation, it's for you. It's great for beginners. It's great for people who just like the distribution, experienced users. Um, it would be wrong to just categorize it as a beginner distro. It's great to begin with, but it's great to stay with as well. That's a good saying, isn't it? A nice little strap line. Um would I use it? Uh, yeah, absolutely I would. Um, <laughs> you know me, I tend to be a bit of, bit of a geek and there's lots of distributions out there that I like and I've settled on Slackware and Arch more than anything else. But nevertheless, you know, I, I've used Mint in the past and uh, I think it's a really good distribution. I would certainly use it um, rather than Ubuntu who stick with GNOME. I think Cinnamon is, is a far superior desktop to GNOME. And of course, it came about initially when uh, GNOME moved from GNOME 2 to GNOME 3. I mean, that's it, it's sort of ancestry. Um, 
So, yeah. Um, what about LMDE as compared to the Ubuntu version? Well, out of preference, I would pick the Debian edition simply because I prefer to stay closer to the source. If you're looking at using lots of PPA, PPAs and you rely heavily on uh, the Ubuntu help forums and things like that, well, perhaps the Ubuntu version might be the choice for you. But I don't think you're really going to lose out if you move to Debian. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, it's actually Friday today, and I'm going to schedule this for release on Saturday. Um, I'm hoping for some good weather tomorrow. Uh, I've got the bike ready to go out, so we're just ready to wheel it out. But we just had another spat of rain today, unfortunately, but never mind. Um, but I will see you potentially next weekend, depending on the weather. Hope you enjoy the video. Have a great weekend. And uh, as normal, I would like to thank all these fine people at the back. Um, just before I go... I would like to just make mention of uh, a friend of mine who actually runs the Slackware Mirror, slackware.uk. Normally at this point, I would thank the, the people, my existing patrons, and, and say, if you want to support me, please go to patreon.com forward slash old tech bloke. However, I, I, I'm going to make a, a little bit of appeal at the moment. Um, Slackware.uk.uk is a great mirror, and uh, it relies on uh, contributions from the community. And I know Darren, the, uh, the guy who runs the mirror, was telling me the other day that unfortunately he's about to lose uh, one of his large sponsors through no fault of their own other than the sponsor is ceasing to to be in business anymore so i know slackware.uk is looking for more patrons so if you like my slackware content and you've been using slackware can i ask that you consider becoming a patron of slackware uk Okay, so, and if, if you've got a few quid to spare and you're going to chuck it my way, chuck it Slackware UK's way instead. Uh, it's needed far more there. Okay, guys, that's it for today. Thanks very much. See you soon.